Good evening, I'm Ted Henry. Tonight we're going to take you on a journey through five decades. It's the story of two women bound together by tragedy, by the need for survival against the forces of the Holocaust. Two women Many years have passed since I first reported on this story of a very spiritual woman who had been a prisoner at Auschwitz, the extermination and concentration camp run by the Nazis. This story is being shared again because International Holocaust Remembrance Day was held just last week, within a couple of days of the death of 94-year-old Agnes Greenfeld of Cleveland, Ohio, the woman this story is principally about. It is a miraculous story told in 26 minutes and remains as timely today as it was in 1945 when these scenes at Auschwitz were first recorded. A reminder for all to never forget. Welcome to Soul Journeys and to the story I call Finding Elisa. I was looking for her for so many years and nobody knew about her, nobody knew her. Right now the Holocaust and War Victims Tracing Center is handling about 15,000 cases. In the majority of those cases we're looking for documentation about the fate of an individual. Tonight, one woman searches for answers about a friend she has not seen in almost 50 years and about a past she cannot forget. Halfway around the world, she finds the truth. Good evening, I'm Ted Henry. Tonight, we're going to take you on a journey through five decades. It's the story of two women bound together by tragedy by the need for survival against the forces of the Holocaust. Two women, best friends, who only became separated by the end of the war. They hadn't seen each other for the past 50 years until now. This is Agnes Greenfeld, a Holocaust survivor from Auschwitz, who has lived in Cleveland for over 45 years. Agnes says she wouldn't be alive today if it hadn't been for just one person, Eliza Grunwald. They met and became friends at Auschwitz, but were forced to separate when they were liberated in 1945. And ever since that time, they have dedicated much of their lives to trying to find each other again. Yes, this is a Holocaust story, but it's not a story about death. Rather, it's a story about hope and remembrance and celebration. And it's also a story about friendship, a friendship so strong that it sustained two women during one of the hollowest periods in human history. Hungary, early 1944, the world was at war in other parts of Europe. Jews were being rounded up by the thousands and sent to concentration camps. But in Hungary, everything remained relatively normal, and Jewish families were able to go on with daily activities, although inside they lived with a deep-seated fear of what the future might bring. But Agnes Greenfeld didn't know there was any reason to be afraid. She was 18 years old and the only thing on her mind was the upcoming high school graduation test. Her father was a successful businessman who wanted more than anything to protect his family, which is why he would never talk to his children about the Holocaust, why he would refuse to tell them that in other parts of the world, Jews were being tortured and killed in the Nazi pursuit of the so-called perfect race. But Agnes' father could not protect his family forever, and finally, in the spring of 1944, the war was no longer in another part of the world. It came to Hungary. German soldiers captured Hungarian Jews and began sending them to death camps. Agnes and her family tried to escape to Slovakia, but it was no use. One night, Agnes and her sister and her mother were captured by the police, and it wasn't long before they were shoved into a cattle car where they stayed for two days. Their trip ended at Auschwitz. Did you know where they were going to take you? We heard about Auschwitz, but um, I, we, I, we weren't sure. We weren't sure that where they are taking us. We know that it's not a good place because we wanted to hide. We tried to hide. It's estimated that over one and a half million people died at Auschwitz during World War II 
Jews and non-Jews alike were shipped in by the thousands every day. Their possessions were taken away, and they were stripped of everything, their clothes, even their names. Here, a prisoner was considered only a number. Although Agnes and her family didn't know with clarity what would happen when their train finally stopped, they had an idea. And as soon as they arrived in Auschwitz and got off the cattle car, the unthinkable happened. They gave the order right away to start marching. Everything was going fast, fast. My mother said, I see that they are taking out some girls from the rows ahead of us. And I turned to her and to, you know, because she was talking, so I turned to her. And uh, I didn't see that this German was next to me, but I felt all of a sudden a hand grabbing my dress. And so he tore me out of my mother's arm and threw me to the right. Is this, is this the last time you saw your this mother? This was the last time. And your sister? Although Agnes wasn't sure exactly what happened to her family, it wasn't long before she learned the truth. They told me the next day, because I asked people who were already in, in the camp for a longer time, that uh, where are my mother and sister? They were, they were separated. So one girl told me, did you see that fire? That's where they are. They were killed that night. The two most important people in Agnes's life had been sent to the gas chambers and crematorium. Suddenly, she was all alone. The next thing Agnes knew, she was taken with 200 other strangers to a building where they were shaved and taken to the shower. But as Agnes says in her diary, the showers at Auschwitz were often deadly. I heard that they trick the victims. They tell them that they are have, being taken to the showers, but instead they are taking them in the gas chamber. I had no more fear. I was not afraid of dying anymore, but I was afraid to die so alone. All the others will embrace, will hug each other. I will be standing and drop to the floor alone, nobody even knowing or caring who I, who I am. Disappearing from this life all alone. At that moment, I only wished and wished so hard if I could just hold somebody's hand while I'm grasping for air. And in the next instant, her life changed forever. I felt so terribly sorry for myself when I heard this girl standing next to me asking, are you here alone? When I answered yes, she told me that she's also all by herself. And she said, let's stay together from now on. It was Elisa Grunwald, or Lietze, as she was called by her friends. And suddenly, Agnes didn't feel so alone anymore. From that moment on, Lizzie and I became inseparable. It was as if we had known each other all our lives, which was in a sense true. The life we had before we were brought to Auschwitz was not existent for us anymore. I know today that I could not have survived the lager without Lizzie's friendship. They did survive together. Nine months at the sprawling Auschwitz labor and death camp compound. They slept in the same barracks and worked side by side in the same factory. They guarded each other like family. If another prisoner was cruel to Agnes, it was Elisa who stepped in to protect her. But finally in May of 1945, the war ended and the Jews were liberated. Agnes, Elisa, and all the other camp survivors were free to go home. They walked towards Hungary for weeks together, but eventually it was time for them to say goodbye. If they wanted to return to their hometowns, they had to go in different directions. I was very sad, but somehow I felt that I met her when all this started. So that means this bad thing is ending, and now I am I thought I'm going home to my old life. Well, Agnes was going back, but not to her old life. Things were different now. Her home was almost empty. 
Her older brother survived, but her mother and father and sister and younger brother were all gone, killed by the Nazis. Drained and distraught, she had to start all over again. And miles away, Elisa also pieced her life back together again. She fell in love and married Joseph Grunwald. Agnes and Elisa struggled to live again. They could not forget the deep scars of Auschwitz. But what kept them going were the lasting memories of each other. It's hard to imagine resuming a normal life after spending months in a concentration camp. But Agnes tried to do exactly that. When she returned to Hungary, she met Joseph Greenfell. He, too, was a Holocaust survivor. It wasn't long before they were married, and in 1950, they moved to Cleveland. Joseph and Agnes raised two children, a boy and a girl. But over the years, even through all the good times, there was something Agnes could never forget, her time in Auschwitz and her long lost friend, Elisa. What had become of this woman who provided unconditional friendship and support so long ago? For the past 25 years, Agnes has been trying to answer that question. She sought help from every organization that might be able to locate Eliza, but no one had an answer. She even placed an ad in the Cleveland Jewish News in the hope that someone might have some information about Eliza's whereabouts, but again, no response. And then in a final attempt to find her friend, Agnes went to the American Red Cross if they couldn't locate Eliza, then it was doubtful that Agnes would ever know what happened to her. The Cleveland chapter sent the case to the Red Cross International Holocaust and War Victim Center in Baltimore, and the search began. But if you thought they'd just punch a name on a keyboard and come up with a current address, you'd be mistaken. The answer is not inside this computer, but rather it's on these shelves, row after row, box after box, each one filled with papers that must be sorted through by hand. Between the National Archives in Washington, D.C. and the tracing headquarters in Germany, the Red Cross has access to over 48 million documents, all related to victims of Nazi persecution. There are Nazi prison lists, transport lists, and roll call lists from concentration camps and death certificates, just to name a few. Each piece of paper fills in a tiny gap. The work can be tedious, but without it, people like Agnes may never get the answer they're seeking. We're oriented toward looking for that one person, and that can be very difficult. So in a sense, it is like looking for a needle in a haystack. And sometimes we're amazed uh, that we are able to find out what happened to someone. And when we find someone who survived, that uh, is extremely powerful. The person sought is my beautiful grandmother. My wonderful uncle. Not everyone gets the answer they're hoping for. Some get the news they were dreading. The person they sought is confirmed dead, another victim of the Nazi regime. Some don't get any answers at all. But for a lucky few, a miracle takes place. And for Agnes Greenfeld, it happened on August 24th, 1993. She got the good news in the mail. Eliza was alive. The tracing center found her living in Israel. For Agnes, a 25-year search was over. Welcome back, I'm Ted Henry. When the Red Cross notified Agnes that Eliza was still alive, she was stunned. Quickly, she wrote a letter to her long lost friend from Auschwitz. She had to see her. So a trip was planned to Eliza's home in Israel. And we were there for a reunion 50 years in the making, a long overdue reunion that was full of anticipation. This is the day Agnes gets ready for her trip to see Eliza, looking through photographs, deciding which items will help explain her life to her friend. She's chosen this special gift to give Eliza when she sees her, a silk scarf. As she packs it, she is reminded of their first night in Auschwitz. She gave Eliza a scarf back then too, but for a very different reason. 
I was lucky that I got a piece of cloth um, that I, which I used to cover my head because after they shaved us, and not just cut our hair short, but shaved us. And uh, it was a terrible feeling. I mean, we, we looked like if we would be not normal people, mm -hmm. not even people. Sure. So after I met Litsy, I tore this piece of cloth in two because it was a square, and I gave her half and she covered her head and I covered my head. I think we were the only two girls in the whole group who were able to cover our head and that meant, meant a lot. So Agnes puts the gift away and is ready for her journey. Before long, she and Joseph are on a plane to Israel. Aliza lives in Netanya, a small community outside of Jerusalem. Agnes' arrival in this country suddenly makes everything real. The years of searching for her best friend are finally over. When the day of the reunion arrives, she talks with nervous excitement. And I, you know what I'm thinking about? It was 49 years, almost five decades. I must have gotten old. <laughs> five decades. So it's a little bit sort of bittersweet. <laughs> On the way to see Eliza, Agnes thinks about the last moments she spent with her friend. It was on the long walk home after liberation. They stopped at a soup kitchen on the side of the road when someone told them that Eliza's mother was still alive and that she was there right then in that very building. It seemed too good to be true. So she ran to her, she bent down to, to her feet and, and, and kissed the floor of her feet and everybody gathered around us and just cried and everybody thought maybe we will meet our mothers too but very few did this was the last time Agnes and Eliza were together if I think about it the when did I see her less then I get very emotional but I'm not going to think about it I'm just thinking that I'm going to see her that's all <laughs> Agnes doesn't want this to be a sad occasion she spent much of her life wondering if this day would ever come. And now that it's finally here, she wants it to be a celebration. Well, Agnes, here we are. Okay. It's taken 50 years to get to this moment. The last time these two women were together, they had no idea what the future would hold. Today, it's another time, a different world. Hi. 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 Eliza introduces her daughter, named after Agnes. For half a century, Holocaust walls have forced them to live inward. And even now, they allow their emotional guard down only so far. They speak to each other in Hungarian, sharing stories about children and grandchildren and the lives they led after the war. And soon the conversation turns to memories they have of each other. Eliza says Agnes even walks the same way she did 50 years ago. For Eliza, this day would be perfect, except for one thing. Her husband, Joseph, passed away only four short months ago. So he never got a chance to meet Agnes, the woman he heard so much about over the years. The next day, Agnes meets Eliza's entire family, Everyone here has heard a lot over the years about Agnes because they seem to know her already when she arrives. The evening passes quickly, and soon it's time for these two women to say goodbye again. It seems like a short visit after all these years, but for Agnes, it renewed her spirit and reconnected her with the past. It was really wonderful to see that she also was as happy as I was to see each other. Before I left, uh, some of my friends told me that don't be surprised, uh, you know, so many, after so many years, you wouldn't even know what to talk to each other. But we, we did. And, um, and I hope we'll get even closer in the future. Agnes invited Eliza to come spend some time in the United States, and she accepted. This reunion in Israel marked a new beginning for each of them. 
For Agnes, it was the trip of a lifetime, but a trip that was not yet over. Agnes was compelled to go one more place. It was where she and Eliza met for the very first time, where she lost her family. Agnes wanted to go back to Auschwitz. The last time Agnes was at Auschwitz, she came by cattle car. Now, as she walks the grounds of this huge complex that is Auschwitz today, she remembers clearly her first moments here back in 1944. It was so quiet. But, uh, like in a cemetery, it was just quiet. These barracks, they looked like graves. Huge graves. Agnes never imagined she would return to this place. Everywhere she looks, there are reminders of what life was like 50 years ago. The train station through which thousands of new prisoners passed every day. The barbed wire fences that made sure no one ever escaped. And she even walked the floors of a barracks just like the one she and Eliza lived in for so many months. But the most chilling item in this whole camp is what has become the symbol of Nazi terror, the gas chamber and crematorium. Over a million people died in the gas chambers here, including Agnes' mother and sister. Their memory is what brought her back to this camp. I didn't go back to see whether it's the same or to remember what was there or what happened to me there. Actually, I really went there as if I would have gone in the cemetery where my families now, actually, the ashes, not the body, but the ashes are buried somewhere. For years, Agnes wanted to visit her family's gravesite, to light a candle, to say a prayer. Today, standing at the ruins of the crematorium where they died, she finally gets a chance. So some people, they can go to the graves and they can say a prayer on their personal thoughts. And I never had this. So when I was at the, uh, at the ruins of the crematorium, I felt that I am there and I'm talking to them. But I know that they are very proud of me and the, the life that I lived. And I'm sure they are very proud of my husband and uh, the baby brought up our children. And sort of when I left, I felt that, that they are smiling at me, that they are happy. As Agnes takes a final walk through Auschwitz, she reflects on the time she spent here years ago, about her family, about Eliza. It's hard to come back, but it's the only way she can complete the circle and go on thousands of miles away from home, she is finally able to say goodbye. But this trip was also her chance to be reacquainted again with Eliza, the one person who made life bearable back then. Few of us undoubtedly will ever understand what these two women went through together, the bond they share now. For Agnes, it's comforting just to know that somewhere, even if it's halfway around the world, there is someone who understands everything she's been through. I really feel like a sister, like if she would be, well, I always felt like a sister, and her children told me that she always talked about it, that she has a sister somewhere, and that was me. <laughs> why some people died in camps like Auschwitz and why others were allowed to live is a mystery. And some of those most perplexed by these mysteries are the very survivors themselves. If you had the chance to ask one question to God that you see in your prayers, what question would you ask? That why exactly me that I came back from this group of people. My mother was young. She was 43, and my sister, 
She was as tall as me. How do you think you stayed alive? Miracle. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. It's hard not to believe in miracles when you hear a story like Agnes's. Just when she had given up hope of finding Eliza, someone in a totally different part of the world came through for her with an answer. And there are still thousands of people looking for these kinds of answers today. People who have gone to the Red Cross in search of even the tiniest clue about what may have happened to their loved ones. Maybe now, because of stories like this one, these people might have some additional hope of learning the truth. Agnes and Eliza are together again after 50 years. Like their memories, their friendship endures. I'm Ted Henry. Good night.